welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. This is a hundred and... I don't know. 165 maybe number 165 so I've done a few of these and I try and make each one a little bit different from the one before but there is an overlap because it's always me you know what I mean? It's always... I'm always... It's always my voice. And sometimes I'll tell a story. Sometimes I'll just... Talk about my life. Sometimes I tell... Fibs and lies and just make stuff up. Sometimes I do all, all of those things mixed together... Sometimes I'll read out stats from my podcasts, but that would involve getting my laptop out, and my laptop is currently charging, because I mentioned in yesterday's recording that I have been tidying my flat up you know, sorting out stuff and cleaning up and moving some of the furniture out into the storage room and what I've done is I've moved the table further away from where it was which means the adapter for the laptop can't really reach the laptop when it's on the table so I just charge it up and then when I need to use it I can just use it without the adapter without being connected to the internet with a wire so I just use wireless which you may think but surely everything's wireless now in it well it is wireless but It's just not very fast. The laptop, when I use the internet, isn't particularly speedy. Unless it's connected directly to the internet hub. Which is what I've been doing for the last year or so. But now, I have kind of decided that I want to spend less time looking at that laptop screen. I want to spend less time on the internet. And more time reading. Hopefully more time producing new recordings. More time learning new things so that's my kind of my plan however it's a bit weird because I think a lot of the time when I watch television I would be on a laptop at the same time So now, like today, I was just sitting in my big black squeaky chair, just watching television, and it's not that my life felt empty, (laughs) it's just, it was a bit weird, 
you know, it's like going back in time to the 90s where I would just watch television and not do anything else. And it's okay for maybe an hour or so. But I'm not really... I don't really want to do it for t you know long periods of time anymore. So... I was uh, reading a book today. It's the first time in quite a while that I've sat down and just read a book. I didn't read the whole book, but just sat down and read. And it's a hypnosis book. And it felt, it felt really nice to just sit there got the light on behind me uh, so that I can see the pages nice and bright got me reading glasses on well I haven't now but I did have when I was reading television was off just the sound of the rain outside Occasionally, if I moved my body, I crossed my legs or whatever, there was the sound of the what, the squeakiness of the chair. I don't remember that being in the, the description description of that chair when I purchased it off of Amazon four years ago I don't recall it saying oh it's squeaky it squeaks it may disturb your neighbour's dogs by the high pitched squeaking Actually, sitting at my desk, and I've got my glasses that I wear for just general day to day. They're on the table because I don't need them at this moment. I've got a pad of paper. Just like a you know A4 refill pad, which I was gonna maybe I don't know perhaps write some ideas down uh, to talk about. I've got a pen. It's a red pen. It's a, a barrel. By paper mate, and it's a handwriting. It says on there, black. There's a black ink, and there's a little black, like at the bottom of it or the end of it, the end that doesn't write. A little black plastic kind of cap thing, and then the lid is on the table. got a can of coke on the right hand side of the table and then I've got my iPhone sitting on the table with the microphone plugged in and I've got the power pack for the microphone and about seven, seven miles of uh, cable <laughs> would you believe a really long cable which is all tied up and knotted and it connects to my microphone it's a lapel microphone which is a 
attached to my t-shirt. And I'm just sitting in the chair. And to kind of stretch my lower back a bit. So I think that's kind of a, a message to me that I need to look at doing a bit more exercise to strengthen my lower back. So I'm going to look into that. I mean, today, or yesterday rather, um, I woke up at... What was it? Yeah, it was about quarter to five in the afternoon. I went to bed about... Six, half six, something like that. And I woke up initially about nine, half nine, something like that. And and I thought, oh, no, it's a little bit, a little bit too early. Haven't had quite enough sleep at this present moment to warrant staying in our bed so I thought I'd just go back and I'd wake up at I don't know, midday or one or two but not nearly five so I got Andre out of his cage because I put him in his cage last night and he was fast asleep and he wasn't in his hammock he was in the little I don't know how to describe it it's basically it's like a pouch probably like a little nest really for him but it's a, a pouch that he can climb into and it's got a little hole that you can get in and it's quite difficult to get to him because my hand just about fits into the hole and he, he likes that he likes getting to places that I can't get to him which is weird and initially he just looked at me and just went back to sleep and I said, you know, come on, come on, mate, get up. I said, you can go back to sleep when we're up, but just, you know, if he's asleep and he's tired, sometimes what I'll do is I'll carry him while he's still asleep and I'll put him into my bed and I'll just put the covers over him so he can just continue sleeping. And sometimes he does. Sometimes it doesn't. But on this occasion, I, he kind of poked his head through the hole and he stretched his arms out and did a big, massive yawn. And then... basically just gently got him and he slid out a hole and I carried him into the hallway and then he wanted to get down so I just let him onto the floor and he ran around and had a little patrol of the flat to see make sure that everything was up to standard I don't know what his reasoning is And what happened next? Now I had my breakfast and a cup of coffee, coffee. Watched a bit of telly, 
Just had a look at the news. And then... I can't remember. I think I listened to the radio. Listened to some music on the radio and just lay back and just relax listening to that. Then I read, read the book for an hour or something. Oh, I rearranged the books. So I had, I put the books into an order of like category. But then today I rearranged the books by author. And I've got quite a few books by Milton Erickson, who is the like the godfather of hypnosis. And I also got a few books like from Carl Rogers and um, Irving Yalom, Rollo May, and what's his name? Uh, Man's Search for Meaning. Um, his, his, his name's gone out of my head but I've got quite a few got a few books from him as well so it's quite a nice collection of like psychotherapy books and counselling I really love that subject I have done for so long I'm not even sure why I just I just find it fascinating to learn I think maybe what it is is it's kind of like astronomy where you know the average person would know about the you know the main planets maybe in the solar system you know main planets going around the sun and about the moon and stuff like that and to be honest I've even forgotten what some of those are but I used to be into astronomy so I used to know but that's a long time ago I used to have a telescope and stuff like that but when you get more into it with astronomy kind of you learn more about you know, other solar systems and galaxies and the you know, black holes and you know, it's kind of goes more in depth into things that maybe you don't need to know about but can be interesting nevertheless and I think what it is for me, my personal yeah, when I think about it, it's kind of like doing a really big jigsaw puzzle. And these books, not just the books, you know, even listening to lectures, listening to uh, conversations with you know, famous therapists watching documentaries you know that kind of stuff it starts to kind of build a picture and they all sort of connect in some way not just from a, a lineage perspective you know one leading to another and you know Sigmund Freud was a hypnotist and before he was a psychotherapist and psychoanalysis came out of hypnosis out of the you know, study in the unconscious mind and and you know so psychotherapy counseling all that stuff basically originated well, initially from philosophy but 
the actual psychotherapy, the therapy side, can go back to hypnosis and then further, further than that. So if it hadn't been for a hypnosis, there may never have been Carl Rogers therapy, person-centered therapy. There may never have been cognitive behavioral therapy because so many of those people were trained in psychotherapy which had its origin in psychoanalysis which had its origin in hypnosis and basically it was a case of theory was when someone's in a trance they will talk you know if you let someone that's maybe in a trance and they talk and stuff will come out because you know in a therapeutic situation if you think that psychotherapy psychoanalysis would be perhaps just speaking from your mind from your heart just talking free association uh, then stuff is going to come out stuff that maybe you'd forgotten about Maybe stuff that's uninteresting. And there can be a therapeutic benefit from that, I guess. I suppose. So that's kind of why I like therapy books because. I love reading about I like the theory you know the theory books but I do like to hear case studies and you know and I was talking yesterday this is turning into sort of like a part two but it's not really everything's a continuation isn't it but yesterday I talked about an Irish surgeon who was a hypnotist hypnotherapist and he worked into his 90s as a hypnotherapist once he retired from being a surgeon well I found his book online and I bought it and it cost about 58 pence plus postage and packing which was about £2.95 couldn't believe it so I bought it so I should have it within a few days depends on where it's coming from I didn't look I mean I've ordered books on Amazon that have been here the next day I've also ordered books on Amazon that have taken three weeks so it's you know it's a little bit of a gamble because I always pay just for basic delivery I don't I'm I'm not in such a hurry that I need it within two days I'm not going to pay an extra three pound for that maybe unless it was food or chocolate I'm talking about chocolate I've got no chocolate There's times when I just fill my fridge full of chocolate. Not the whole fridge. I don't mean you open it and stuff falls out. Mars bars and Snickers and Twixes. No, it's not like full like that. But a couple of uh, a couple of uh, shelves in the door. Well, one particular shelf, the top one, I sometimes fill with. I maybe get a few packs of. Uh, chocolates like chocolate bars like four in a pack or six in a pack 
and I tried to go for a pound just a one pound not in weight but like the worth one one pound sterling I like to get things for a pound it's one of my little hobbies I suppose if I see something on special offer and it's something that I would normally get then I will buy extra you know like breakfast cereal so I'm going to eat it and that was a boring sentence let me tell you about let me tell you about the breakfast cereal that I bought. I think one of my the best breakfast cereals I've ever ate. Not it wasn't because of the cereal, it was because just the meal, the actual bowl, it was a bowl of cornflakes with milk and sugar. And I was about 12 probably at the time. And I'd gone away for a weekend with the Sea Cadets. And we'd spent the whole weekend living outside and just being dirty and just getting covered and just, you know, learning how to light fires and you know kind of survive in the wilderness and the thing I remember most about that weekend was the breakfast on the last day the 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 morning when we were leaving we were getting onto the coach and we were coming back it was like a breakfast of freedom I mean even the idea of going to school the next day didn't even bother me just the freedom of being able to get away from all those people that I'd been sleeping with and eating with and oh and that was the best bowl of cornflakes that I ever had in my life it was beautiful it uplifted my spirits no end I really enjoyed it one of my favourite cereals ever and I don't I don't eat it very often because it is pretty much just sugar I don't think it's got much in a way of uh, nutritional value but I discovered these I think when I was a kid and I fell in love with them but we didn't didn't have them very often and the first time I remember having them although I'm sure I had them when I was a kid, was when I was 18. And I had this job. I used the word job very kind of lightly because I was sleeping on the floor of some friend's flat. So I was sleeping on the floor in the living room on a, you know, like a bed uh, sleep, you know, I don't know. You know, I was like a fold-out, little fold-out camper beds or something. And my job was to look after the little girl that they had. So she'd go into, she'd be in bed, they'd go to work to do the night shift and I'd be there just, just in case she needed me. And 
then they'd come home in the morning at 6 o'clock or 6.30 and the television would go on and they'd be in the living room and then my job then would be to take her to school because that's by about half eight they'd be going to bed so they'd they'd get the little girl ready for school and I would walk her to school and I don't think I picked her up from school but I took her to school every day for a few months and I had I had no money but I think they gave me gave me food and you know a little bit of uh, cash a week so I ended up getting myself a part time job cleaning a supermarket in the morning um, early morning so when they got in I'd go and do that from 7 to half 8 or something like that Or was it an evening job? I don't know. I forget. But I just remember buying golden nuggets, which was my, you know, my favourite cereal of all time. Although I do like Ready Breck as well. In fact, I kind of want to eat some Ready Breck now. But uh, I've been eating Special K the last few weeks. It's okay, no pun intended, it's no, it's okay cereal. Um, the good thing about it is, well, I don't have sugar on it. Which is kind of part of my plan to reduce my sugar intake. So the breakfast cereal is definitely um, a time, <laughs> it's a time when I have had a fair bit of sugar like both in my coffee and on my breakfast cereal but now I don't have any cere- any breakfast any sugar rather on the breakfast cereal at all and I've got this special uh, honey sweetener that my friend bought me from Holland and Barrett and it's a special like honey uh, that is actually tastes nicer than sugar so I haven't had any sugar in my coffee for overall no for when not I don't know when no it's two weeks now it'll be two weeks this Wednesday yeah, two weeks. And uh, he bought me that because he had some in his house. And I went and visited him in London. And he had, uh, he's really healthy living. He's uh, like, he eats healthily. And, you know, he's in his, I don't know how old he is, about 71, 72. And, He's physically fitter than I am. You know, he was. <laughs> we were. I might have mentioned this in previous recordings. But he walked. He said, "Oh, I need to go to the bank." So we walked to the bank with him, and it was miles away. Miles literally miles and you know what the weird thing about it is it took probably 30 30 minutes maybe longer to get there walking really fast I'm talking far I was actually out of breath because he was walking fast I was like 
I can understand it. I mean, I, you know, the only time I walk that fast is when I need the toilet. But, you know, I, I kept up with him most of the time. But on the way back, we got back in half the time. And I said, are we here already? And he said, yeah. I said, why? How did we get back so quick? He said, oh, I took a shortcut. Because I, I realised we hadn't gone down the same roads. Well, I'd only done the journey once, so I can't, wasn't really... I, know, I was in London, a lot of the roads looked very similar. He lives in a nice area where all the houses are really big. Um, not all of them, but a lot of the houses are really big. Um, but the whole the whole kind of area looks very similar. There's like old more railings. The pavements are really wide, and the roads are wide. So it's it's not all of London is like that. Uh, where I lived in East London, the pavements were just like normal. You could possibly possibly get two people next to each other, just about if they were really close. On the pavement and the the roads were, you know, not big enough them for more than two cars. Uh, I don't mean in the whole road; they weren't really really short roads, but you know, either side of the road. So taking over cars wasn't really an option. But in the area that he lives, it's everything seems to be a bit bigger. But he showed me this uh, before he left the house. He made me a cup of tea, and he used this honey. It was really nice. So what I've done. Because I figured that you're going to be excited about my new honey sweetening stuff. So I thought I would share with you. my coffee behaviour now sometimes I'll have a cup of tea and, but that would normally be if I was drinking something you know drinking some tea during the day or maybe early evening but I I like a nice cup of coffee with my breakfast it's just one of those things um, and it's the only time of the day usually that I ever drink coffee just one cup and I don't even have a huge amount of coffee in the coffee cup or mug, depending on what I use. Because I do have three mugs, which are a little bit, a bit bigger, differently shaped to the cups. But if they're being used, uh, if they're in the sink being soaked, then I might use a cup. Sometimes I just use a cup anyway. I would say my preference would be a mug. I've got a what have I got? I've got a mug with a ferret on. A 
think it's like uh, world's best ferret dad or something on it oh, it says something I forget I should look at it sometime I've got another mug which has something else on it I think a friend bought it when she was on a holiday and it was uh, like an animal sanctuary or something I think I've got another mug as well I used to have one with uh, bits of poo like it was it's a novelty mug that was sent to me and it had uh, different poo shapes and I didn't actually know where it came from so what I do in the morning is I kind of have a routine. I suppose everybody has some kind of a routine. It's probably quite natural. So I walk into the kitchen, I turn right, otherwise I walk into the fridge so I turn right and I walk up to the sink I stop before I get to the sink and then I turn left sometimes I just turn my head other times I turn my whole body and I pick up the kettle and I put some water in from the tap I squish it around not the kettle but the water inside and then I empty it into the sink and then I fill the kettle up just you know just enough for like one and a half cups or something so I don't fill it all the way up to the top and uh, so I press click the on, you know, I click the on button, which is like a press down thing on the top of the handle, which is on the right hand side. Well, actually, it depends, depends which way you're facing. If I stood, if I climbed onto the counter, the kitchen counter, and stood behind the kettle, the handle would be on my left but that just the steam would go in my face wouldn't it if I did that so I don't but then how would I pour pour it into a cup so it'd be like basically like touching my toes so yeah I don't like that idea I'm not I have to stop doing it and then what I do is I get a cup or a mug I won't go through the whole process because what he told you that you know sometimes I'll choose a mug if there's no mugs I'll get a cup if there's one on the training board that's the one I pick if there's three on a training board then I'm likely to pick the middle one but if there's no, no, no cups or mugs on the training board what I do then is I turn all the way around and I walk a few steps and turn right and there's a I don't know what you call them like a, a tea tree teacup tree it's like a wooden stand with handles and the 
I've got some, I think there's six handles, so that means I can put one cup, two cups, three cups, four, five, just trying to visualise it. Yeah, six, six. But I have more than six cups and mugs. So sometimes it's like, oh, what am I going to do? I've only got six places for my cups and mugs. But I've got nine cups and mugs. Or eight, depending on how many I've actually got. And... So quite often there either is some of the cups or mugs in the sink or they're on, not the draining board, but the plasticky draining board thing that's on top of the draining board next to the sink. So I pick a cup up. And this is something that I always do. I always rinse the cup out with cold water. Now, it's just something that I've been doing for a long, long time. It's, I don't know, it's, it's a bit like writing poetry on the toilet. It's just, you know, one of those things, it kind of goes together with the process so I rinse the cup out or the mug depending because sometimes there might only be cups available I mean there are sometimes when there's only mugs available because I might have had so many plates on the draining board that the dishes and plates were obscuring my uh, visual of the hidden cups so I just didn't know they were there so I'd use the ones from the wooden cup tree and then I'd be standing at the sink with the kettle boiling and thinking oh no I've got to wash a cup up then I realise and I think I wonder and it's not really like a definite yet but I'm thinking maybe maybe if I lift that plate up something magical may happen and sometimes when I do lift the plate up just like magic a cup appears that was hidden and alas I don't need to go through the whole process of washing up a cup so I rinse it out as normal and I put it on the side on the kitchen side you know ready to add the, the contents which make up my cup of coffee. Now when I visit people, not that I really do that much these days, but in the past when I visited people, I automatically rinse out a cup before using it. And I think some people think I'm being rude like they haven't, I think that they haven't washed up properly. Which is true, but I don't. But I mean, that's not the only reason. I just, it's just a habit that I have. And the 
restaurants are difficult sometimes. You have a cup of tea and say, well, I just need to rinse this out. And they say, no, you can't come back here. This is the kitchen. What are you doing? I said, don't worry. It's just a habit. I just used to doing it at home. But you're not at home here. Yeah, but I feel at home. That's the magic of this restaurant. That's why I keep returning. You just make me feel at home. And the chef just smiled at me, had a little hug, a little kiss, and, you know, moved on. And once the cup is on the side of the kitchen side uh, counter, whatever you want to call it, the flat surface, which Andre longs to climb onto so he can push everything off. I think that's his dream. He actually got to fulfil his dream once. Um, I've mentioned it before probably, but I came home one day and nearly everything was on the kitchen floor. I mean, it literally looked like he'd moved stuff from other rooms, put it onto the counters and then pushed that off. As well as the stuff that was already on there. Everything. He just... Plates, cutlery... You know, no jars of pickle. Never really been into jars of pickle. It's not about the jars, but pickles. I don't know, it's not really... I think that's going to be something that I'm really going to enjoy when I get older. Because as we, sometimes our taste buds change a little bit. Um, I do like sweet stuff, but I, just, I, I kind of probably more appreciative appreciative, appreciative of savoury stuff than perhaps I used to be. You know, when I was a kid, I could, you know, I'd have happily lived on sweets and chocolate, even though, you know, I wasn't allowed to, so I didn't. a bit of a pause there I really believe something interesting was going to come out of my mouth but it didn't um, right so I put the coffee cup on the floor not on the floor on the thing Andre's just arrived so I didn't realise Andre was in my bed I've just heard him jump off the bed He's just done and done something near the front door, which concern, concern, concerns me mildly. And now he's come in, looked at me, looked at me as if to say, what do you want? What are you looking at? And run away again. And now he's climbed back onto my bed, I can hear. And all the little sounds he makes. I jumped into bed the other day. It was during the day. But I think it was like... No, it was during the day, it was. I didn't jump in, you know. I'm a little bit too heavy to just jump onto anything. I just have to be... I don't like... I don't get onto the bed really slowly. But I, you know... It's, it's still, I don't jump onto it, I just get on, but I just started cuddling the quilt like I do, pretending it's, uh, the thing is I don't, when I cuddle the quilt, I'm not pretending it's a human, you know, I'm not pretending it's someone that loves me or anything like that, I'm aware it's the quilt just like cuddling the quilt 
this feels lovely. I like it. It's I never realised, but that's what I want. That's what I need out of a woman. I need a woman that looks and feels like a quilt. Um, bedding, really. Just someone that... That sounds bad, doesn't it? I don't mean that in a weird way. Just I like the quilt. It just feels really spongy and comfortable. But anyway... So I've got my leg over the, the quilt. Just... I'm not dry humping it. I'm just... Just literally just cuddling it. I cuddle it with my arms and with my legs. And suddenly there was this movement. And it made me jump. It was Andre. He was in the bed. I didn't realise. His head just popped down. I was like, ah. Oh. I don't know who was more jumped. Him or me. I think he was like, what the hell? And then he said to me, well, I'm hardly going to be surprised that you're in the bed, am I? I said, what? He said, he said, well... I don't think you can possibly get into the bed without waking me up. I thought, well, that's a bit rude. He said, yeah, so? I said, get onto the naughty step now. And he said, you get on a naughty step. And then he said, oh no, you can't, because you can't fit, because your belly's too big. And he ran off giggling. He's very naughty. So I got my cup on the counter and I put a bowl which I also rinse out clean but I rinse it out put that on the side I put the bowl on the left um, no I put the cup on the left hand side and the bowl on the right hand side I put the breakfast cereal which is in plastic container into the bowl which is at the moment special K I then get a spoon that I use for my breakfast. I use that to get uh, probably about a quarter of that spoon out of the coffee jar, and I put that into the, the into the cup. And then I I used to put sugar in. I'd have like maybe two sugars. But I don't anymore. Uh, ever since I've had this uh, special organic sweetener, it's called agave nectar. Agave nectar, agave nectar, and it's uh, light, light amber and mild. It's from the Groovy Food Company, and it's great in hot drinks and cereals. It's really nice, seriously. And trust me, I'm not getting paid to advertise this. Because oh, no one wants to pay me for anything, so it's okay. The On the back it says, Our delicious agave nectar. I might be pronouncing it wrong. It might be agave nectar. Uh, comes straight from the organically grown Blue Weber agave plant in Mexico or Mexico. Um, it makes a pretty groovy alternative. The fact that they use the word groovy, which is my favourite word. Um, well, yes, that's another word I like, but I don't hear that too often. Uh, so, pretty groovy alternative to refined brown sugar and artificial sweeteners. Uh, yeah. Well, you can look. It says, um, drizzle, mix, cook. Or drizzle dot mix dot cook. Drizzle, agave. Nectar, light, amber and mild over food, stir into drinks or use in backing. 
So that's good. Ingredients. 100% organic agave nectar. Storage. Dislikes the sun and loves dry cupboards. Okay, so it's a little bit prejudiced, but that's fine. Um, not, I like, I'm not a big fan of the sun. I like it because I know, obviously, it's, it's useful for um, well, life. But it's this really nice stuff, this is, and I would recommend it. And I got it, or well, my friend bought it for me from Holland and Barrett, which is a health food shop in England. Um, but you may, it might be available in other parts of the world. Uh, I don't know, I have not travelled extensively looking for health food shops. But this is kind of, it's not the first step to eating healthily because I used to go to the health food shop regularly when I was younger. And I used to go to the gym and I was eating protein shakes and vitamins and all kinds of stuff. But uh, not done that lately. I think once my body kind of went out of shape, because once I stopped smoking in 1999, December 1999, because before that I was slim, I was muscular, I was working out. And then I stopped and I put lots of weight on really quickly. And it was, it doesn't have to happen. It's just because I started drinking alcohol and just eating more really. Just having more sugar and stuff. And my metabolism kind of changed but it didn't have to. I could have just eaten the same and not drunk. And I probably would have maybe put, might have put a, a stone on or something, but maybe nothing. There was nothing. There was nothing to stop me from eating healthily. It was just myself. I just did it myself. And uh, I suppose I kind of didn't bother so much with the healthy lifestyle so much, I suppose. I guess I've kind of more concentrated on my mind, um, my brain, trying to, I've, I feel I've given that more attention, my mental health than my physical health, so it's time I gave my physical health a bit more uh, love, I think. So the coffee I have is called Kenko, it's established in... 1923 it's good to know that stuff when you're drinking it isn't it it really makes a difference um, the coffee company and this one is smooth well rounded medium roast and it is 100 grams um, so which is quite a lot, depending on what you're buying, I suppose. So, but I think it's about three pound fifty, four pound fifty. But this, because I don't drink much, I don't even eat much. I don't have big portions. Um, generally, so I can make things last for a lot longer than some people can, I suppose. Now, I know people that would get through that in a week. But then they've got friends that visit, so I um, kind of can make it last longer. Just me and Andre. But yeah, I reckon this has lasted me probably three weeks, maybe even a month. Just this one Kenko bottle, it's glass. And I got another one, I bought a new one on Wednesday. But there's still enough in there to last me probably another two weeks. Which is good. So that's the coffee I have. The sugar, although I don't really use it anymore, but I've got 
two full bags and I opened in a cupboard plus another bag that's in my plastic sugar container and the sugar I have I'm just holding it now is Whitworth's granulated sugar ideal for scooping sprinkles or sprinkling and stirring and the bottom says fancy a cuppa now um, so yeah this is uh, how much is it like in weight I think the price is about 59 pence and I got it from Iceland don't worry I got a cheap flight <laughs> no it's a, it's a shop oh it doesn't say the weight which I'm surprised that. Thing is, I don't like to. Eat. Um, I need to know more about sugar. I'd enjoy having it more if I knew more about the history. Oh wait a minute! On the side of this, it says fact: sugar was once referred to as white gold, and was considered a luxury until with the 1700s, the late 1700s. Wow. But at the moment I'm not using it but uh, so what I do now I would normally put the sugar in the coffee before putting the hot water in or the boiled water but I don't do that with this I put the honey in afterwards or the liquid agave nectar so I put the hot water in then I put the milk in then I put the milk onto my breakfast cereal although sometimes I put the milk into the coffee put the milk back in the fridge and then come back and I realised well I forgot to put the milk onto the breakfast cereal so I have to turn around and walk up to the fridge again and open it and take it out the thing is the fridge isn't that far away so it's not really a huge hassle but it's it's quite strange because it puts me off sometimes it puts me off my stroke as it were my kind of rhythm and the other day I kind of got a little bit uh, flustered because I was doing things out of order the, the wrong way and I ended up pouring some of the kettle water into over my breakfast cereal only a little bit but just like what am I doing genuinely started to pour the kettle water on my breakfast cereal and I stopped but it was only enough to just you know there's a few teaspoons of it so then what I do when I've got the milk on the breakfast cereal and the milk's in the coffee I then squirt some of this agave nectar honey stuff into it just just a little bit and I stir it and you can tell it's not honey because if, if it was honey honey if you put honey into a hot drink and you stir you can feel it thickens the water but this there's no obstruction it's like it's not even there and when I first got it two weeks ago I put some onto the special K breakfast and then I thought, it's nice, but I don't need it. It's it's not necessary. So I stopped doing that, and I'm you know I feel quite good about it. I mean, it's not like it's a it's a success. It's not like, wow, what an accomplishment! I stopped doing something that I've only just started doing yesterday one time but it feels quite nice to have a breakfast cereal and not have anything on it other than just some milk although I'm planning to try to go a bit more organic and uh, start using like soya milk or something 
before I go, I'll just let you know what tea bags I use. So I brought them in with me. Got a little box here. Oops, sorry. Blimey, it's not supposed to make that much noise. So these are Tetley. And the good thing about that is you haven't got to worry and think to yourself, how long have they been running for? How long have they been making tea bags for? I can't enjoy this drink till I know the history. Well, on the front it says Tetley since 1837. And underneath it says it starts with tea. Okay. Not sure what does, but. And with this box, it's 50% extra free. So I've got 240 tea bags for the price of 160 tea bags. And the amount of tea I drink, that should last me for about two years, if not more. And that's with visitors. Unless I give them away, which I have a tendency of giving stuff away, which I'm going to try and stop doing. Because tea bags are handy to have. So, yeah, so I've got, from the looks of things, I've used about uh, maybe a quarter of the box. And I, I don't know how long I've had the box, maybe a year. But I know that I gave most of those away to a neighbour, I think, uh, like in a little bag just to, for some tea. So they had some, so they have a cup of tea and stuff. I think so that's why I mean myself I, I don't recall having more than about 10 cups of tea not ever but just recently even if I drink tea regularly I normally still wouldn't have more than maybe two a day yeah so I'm going to go I'm going to have to try and do a little bit of editing so that's squeaky I can't believe it. I sat over here purposely to avoid the squeaky chair but I ended up with a squeaky tea bag box it makes me think that the squeak has nothing to do with the object you can kind of just enter it whatever object it wants just to annoy me eee. ok well I'm going to go thank you very much for listening hope that my boringness has been of use and I will speak to you next time